How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here in front of this uh, old closed down office building here and I've got the Beta here the Beta 85X by Beta FPV. There's a couple different variations on the website. Some can hold uh, maybe a deconstructed action cam like a GoPro or maybe an Insta360 Go but right now we're just flying the normal version. That's the Cadex Nebula camera right there with the Cadex Vista and the, the Vista is uh, decased. So we're trying to minimize weight to keep this as light as possible. I've flown the Cadex Nebula a few months ago and was not impressed. But I'm hoping this is like the version 1.2 or something. Um, hopefully that uh, it's gonna look a little bit better. Um, also the two antenna out the back in the L-shaped pattern right there, that is the Crossfire Nano. So I'm gonna be flying DJI FPV with video, but I'm gonna be flying Crossfire uh, radio, radio Link Protocol with my Tyrannus. And I just like that, you know, it, it's, it adds a little bit of weight, a little bit of extra, you know, antenna out the back, but hey, it's what I prefer. I'm bound to bump into a few things today. Mainly plastic, but it does have some carbon fiber on the arms. So the main part of the frame, the structural part of the frame is carbon fiber, but these ducts are all plastic. Also the top with that fin, even though it's kind of characteristic and I think they're trying to go for something here, that's also a fragile point. And I've seen some people, including Ken Heron, fellow YouTuber, break that point off and it kind of splits the uh, the canopy, the, the can camera canopy, right in half. So on Instagram, he shared a picture of that. So I'm hoping I don't do that. Let's get this in the air, see how powerful it is. And also, I'm sure I'm gonna bump into something. Hopefully it's gonna hold up. Stay tuned. So here's what I noticed about the Beta 85X. First of all, the Cadex Nebula. Not a big fan of the Nebula camera, never have been. I was hoping that this was going to be a revision two or something of the uh, Nebula, but unfortunately it looks very similar to when I tried it last time. A somewhat washed out image and lacking some detail at certain times. Plus the Cadex Vista, which normally performs better than this, was not performing well at all. And I was getting a lot of mush, a lot of autofocus mode kick in, and with 50 megabits per second bitrate, really shouldn't be getting that. I even bumped up the milliwattage to 1200 milliwatts, which I normally don't do with the Cadex Vista because of heat issues and heat concerns. That may have helped a little bit, but I was still not getting the performance that I was expecting with the DJI FPV system at 1200 milliwatts with 50 megabits per second. The frame actually held together pretty well considering I bumped it into some things, but I did chew through a couple props pretty quickly and I think it was because I hit some tree limbs and then the ducks kind of uh, deformed and then hit the prop which caused the prop to break a little bit or bend a little bit. Taking the props off was a challenge and I had to actually unscrew the screws mounting the motor onto the frame in order to get enough torque with a couple screwdrivers to wrench the prop off. Flight was what you could probably expect for an 85 millimeter whoop outside, but there were at least four, maybe five times where this quad would not throttle down. What I mean is I was coming to an obstacle and I would throttle down all the way to zero in hopes that I would descend so I could uh, maybe scoot underneath an object or an obstacle. What would happen is the quad would keep going straight at the same throttle value. What I'm thinking is the ESCs and the motors, they kept spinning up because of air mode, because the, uh, the flight controller was sensing movement from the quad due to wind gusts. It was only semi-windy, not extremely windy, but I think that's what was happening. So if there was a gust of wind happening at the exact same time that I wanted to throttle down to zero in order to descend quickly, well, whatever was going on with this flight controller made those ESCs, those motors, continue to spin up and it was as if I never throttled down at all. Yes, I turned accelerometer off. The frame actually held together pretty well and I didn't have any of that uh, canopy, that camera canopy spike break off like some people have been having. It actually held together pretty decently for the crashes I had. The motors felt good, although it was lacking a bit of a punch especially when I was trying to get out of a sticky situation. Perhaps it was a slow roll that I would have had to full throttle out of before bottoming out, or maybe a split S or something like that, which required 
uh, a quick throttle value uh, increase in order to, you know, come out of that movement. Now, in very minimally breezy environments, it was flying decently. If I was being smooth on the sticks, you know, flying very cautiously, but flipping around and, and doing a lot of the tricks and stuff, it's just, it's not designed for that. I don't think you could really do that with this quad. You really wanna start looking at the 95X or something bigger. And the quad just seemed to have a very high top end, but not really the power needed to get up and going really quick if you needed to with a full throttle maneuver coming out of like a split S or maybe uh, punching out in some way. I really wish they didn't use the Caddx Nebula. I wish they had stuck with the original normal DJI FPV camera. It's so much better. It's only like maybe what, four grams more than the Nebula camera, but it's so much higher quality. The whole reason maybe they used the, the Nebula was in order to uh, keep it light when you're adding a decased GoPro. But since we're not doing that, I'd rather have the full DJI FPV camera with the best image quality, because after all, that's how that's exactly how we're recording this. That's all we're using to record is the DVR from the goggles because there's no uh, SD card slot in the Caddx Vista. One other issue I just kind of have to talk about is beta FPV customer support. Really not a fan of it right now, and I'm not sure if it's because of certain pandemic-related issues, but I have a couple different tickets into them. Uh, emails, actually, a ticket has not been created, and I haven't heard back even after I've followed up multiple times. Beta FPV has been responsive when I talk to my, you know, YouTube reviewer rep, but when I contact them like any other person would and just email their customer support or reach out in another way, it's crickets, and I've heard this from many other people, and it's a shame because Beta FPV uh, used to be a company that would be responsive to those types of things. And now that I see them ignoring my emails and my, my problems with orders or with technical issues, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, and I, I wasn't even really wanting to review this Beta 85X. They sent me the Beta 85X without me asking for it, and I had the option to not even review it, but I thought, hey, I, I'll make a video, everyone else is. So I jumped on the wagon there and I made a video, but just wanna let you know, Beta, Beta FPV really needs to step up their customer service game. And um, if, if they can't, then provide an explanation why, because yeah, crickets is not the answer.